Hello and welcome to my webinar. We will talk about the top tech trends to look out for in the next five years. My name is Prashant Kumar and I'm a senior product manager working at Amazon. So the agenda for today is quite simple. We'll be talking about a little bit of introduction about me. We'll then talk about the technologies. And then I would like to share a few nuggets of wisdom which I have acquired um, through my technology implementations and through my time uh, as a product manager. Now, really quickly, who am I? So I'm an engineer. I born and brought up in India. I am did electronics and communication engineering from South of India. I've been working with, I was working with IT consulting for about six years. Uh, I specialized in data, business intelligence, data analytics, big data. And after that, I did my MBA from my business school, post which I started working in startups um, where I implemented machine learning algorithms, artificial intelligence. And then I joined Amazon where I'm currently working as a senior product manager for Amazon business, handling Amazon business checkout and address experience worldwide. So before we start talking about the top technology trends, I uh, wanted to clarify a few things. Firstly, is why am I taking only five years? The reason I'm taking only five years is because the speed at which technology is changing, we don't really know, or actually it's very difficult to predict how technology is gonna be in the 10 years. Like we have made more technological advances in the last 10 years than we have probably made in the last 100. So the speed of innovation is accelerating. Thereby, looking at the technology in a shorter time frame allows you to make predictable decisions, allows you to understand, okay, what's coming and plan yourself accordingly, while at the same time being open and being flexible to what is going to happen in the future. The second thing which I wanted to clarify is that this list by no means is exhaustive. In fact, I, it's the technology trends which I believe, and in my honest opinion, are going to have one of the largest impacts in the coming in the business and in our world, in our lives over the next four to five years. However, you know, things change so rapidly. We didn't know that EV cars are gonna become the new craze or we will start thinking about colonizing moon 10 years back or colonizing the Mars 10 years back. So these are uh, just, uh, you know, if you, if you believe that there are more technologies out there which can be a part of this, I'm sure and I'll, I'm more than happy and more than, more than welcome uh, those, uh, that information and those nuggets of information. So that being said, let's take a look at what are the technologies which I would be talking about today. So we have mixed reality, autonomous of things, which is slightly different than internet of things. So it's a combination of uh, autonomous beings with internet of things. We'll talk about hyper automation. Uh, we'll do a quick touch on blockchain and I'm talking about blockchain, the technology, not the currency. And we'll talk about artificial intelligence. Now I know that some of you may say that, but Prashant, blockchain and artificial intelligence have been around for a long time. Yes, but I feel that we have still not used them to the full potential. So that being said, let's dive in. Mixed reality. Now, I am personally very, very excited about this technology simply because if nothing in the last you know, year and a half, COVID has taught us how important it is for us to be able to interact with both the physical and the virtual world because the virtual world is what gives us that freedom and that flexibility to be anywhere we want and to do anything we want without putting ourselves in harm and in danger. We already know that a lot of companies are talking about going remote full time and a lot of um, psychologists and uh, social experts are talking about the importance of still maintaining a social connection and an interaction with each other. And I see mixed reality as one of the solutions of that puzzle. What is mixed reality? In simplicity, it is an experience where you are taking uh, the real life, the physical world, and you're taking the virtual world and they are both coexisting. 
how is it different is because for example in augmented reality you superimpose on the existing reality on the existing physical world however the level of um how would say the level of interaction you can have is limited on the other hand we have virtual reality which is completely separate from the physical world you can interact more but then there is a boundary and you know there there you are not in the real world mixed reality takes both of them and combines them so let's take an example of what is shown in this pictures right we are talking about microsoft hololens over here microsoft hololens is a classic example where you will see that uh, in education we are let's say talking telling the students about the battle of normandy in world war 2 where the allied forces had landed in normandy and were making their way up towards the french coast and moving towards the uh, towards the enemy military fortifications now there is one thing reading about it now in a mixed reality you would be able to show them the terrain of normandy you'll be able to show them the troops entering the allied troops entering through the sea the enemy fortifications on the beach and in fact you can even allow the students to play and to work with those virtual models to see whether you know uh, they are truly understanding and they are truly experiencing that historical record same goes for the doctors you these days or today a doctor have to do dissections or when i was a student in biology i had to cut up on frogs and uh, you know you have to find a body you have to do the dissection there are limited number of bodies available so it's not common to see a lot of students trying to do their dissection and having a limited amount of time in a virtual reality experience in, in mixed reality experience you can have each person really in a virtual world interact with the human body interact with the internal organs see how they work with each other so it's an incredibly incredibly powerful tool for us to really i would say you know make our learning and make our interaction exponential for education i i think that it is a it's a blessing and it is something which really needs to be um really needs to be focused forward and engineering i was an engineer and i was trying to build electronic signal communication i was trying to build antennas where we had to go into matlab and we had to go and you know try to uh, try to code it out imagine doing all of that or trying to understand the whole concept of electromagnetic in interference through an actual model which which you can interact with it would have made that learning so much more fun and so much more interesting uh, i don't need to i think i don't need to tell you the impact it can have on the entertainment industry like who wouldn't want to be in a batman versus superman movie or watching batman right up close and probably even shaking hands with him or in military application right now the training of for forces and the expenditure on training resources is one of the highest expenditures of any military and that that amount can be significantly reduced through mixed reality allowing soldiers to experience and train in different environments without putting them in danger all right autonomous of things now what is this so we all know about drones and we all know about robots and we all know, know, know about you know um, your self driving cars but the thing so far is that autonomous of things takes the concept of internet of things where your uh, let's say your smart watch or your smartphone or your smart tv or your smart refrigerator or automatically interacting over the internet and then it connects that with the autonomous vehicles or autonomous devices that is autonomous of things that is autonomous um or robots and drones interacting with the physical world but being controlled by a computer by an artificial intelligence and the limit the the opportunities of this technology in last mile delivery are just limitless 
ask any e-commerce web ask any e-commerce company in the world right now one of the biggest challenges they always face is the last mile delivery because that's where you can you can combine a lot and you can consolidate a lot of your uh, shipments but the last mile is almost always done on a one on one basis and it is always restricted by the amount of time a person can go out and the number of hours they can work with drones with robots that thing is just exponentially faster you can save and you can improve your efficiency by a magnitude i, I can't even tell you how how important that is same goes for robots and taxis having an a hive mind which already happens actually if you look tesla and tesla cars already talk to each other and they learn from each other experiences the same if you put in on taxis you have the possibility to eliminate jams altogether if all the cars on the road were autonomous do you really think that you would have jams and traffic congestions because everything would be flowing smoothly um leave such high fancy things the robot roomba in your home is in some ways is an autonomous things especially if it connects itself to a hive mind which can constantly takes care of it and performs maintenance same goes for military drones you can have military drones and military robots which can patrol and respond to any threats based on certain criteria which have been set across by the program now hyper automation this for me actually it was a surprise for me because i didn't know that what some of the work which i was some of the applications which i was using in my day to day life in my office work was actually an example of hyper automation what is hyper automation we all know about robotic process automation that's your what we call the diff, standard automation where you have a non you have a trivial task uh, which is non value add it's completely repetitive and then you automate it and you basically do it by itself hyper automation takes that to the next level so it come takes your normal automation technologies and it combines that with artificial intelligence it combines it with machine learning it in combined it with natural language processing or optical character recognition all of these to kind of i i say that it take it to the next level of giving it almost cognitive level features so let's take an example uh if any of you have been working uh with extensive travel you know that travel expenses are very painful you whenever you travel you have to keep your receipts and then you come back then you have to put all your receipts and all the detail one by one by one and then it gets accessed by your by your system and then you get paid the amount i have been using a tool provided by my company where all i have to do is i just scan the receipt that's it the tool how it works is that once i scan the receipt the system automatically extracts using ocr using optical character recognition already automatically extracts the data it uses machine learning to automatically categorize it it uses rpa to check if whatever the categories and whatever the 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 um, the, the rules are being followed and then once i click a button saying i'm done with my travel automatically creates the report submits it and once it gets approved i get paid so what could have taken an entire day of you know uh, trivial uh, bookkeeping turns into one click and my work is done and without any human help required except on probably not even in the approval part even the approvals are automated same let's talk about uh, another level you know you um it's very common nowadays that you can leave a voice message to a call center employee and using natural language processing the system is go automatically going to understand what is the problem that you are facing it will categorize it into the right uh, space and if it already has an answer ready made available for that problem it will even send you a reply and if you don't have and if it doesn't have that then it will connect you to the right customer center which will then answer your call and will tell okay this is the problem and this is a possible solution and for the customer care executive they will have the right tools in the right places already open on their screens to help answer you faster that's the process of hyper automation and for me 
especially in very repetitive task driven organizations it's for example in accounting in bookkeeping just just in taxation this is like amazing this is this is taking that efficiency to the next level and in the future when we talk about uh, search and making search more efficient when we talk about project automation uh, crm systems erp systems fulfillment tracking of things people's processes all of this all of this have the uh, opportunity to be hyper automated thereby leaving us with more time to be more creative and to innovate more blockchain this for me was very interesting because you know i i myself am a little skeptical about cryptocurrencies but when i started reading about blockchain and i started reading about the technology behind blockchain that's when i understood that crypto is just a tip of the iceberg blockchain in its technology is very interesting it's like a normal database writes data line by line blockchain stores it in blocks which are then connected with each other and because it being a distributed decentralized system means that these data blocks and what is written inside it is irreversible that is incredible if you think about it in terms of your um, identity protection nobody can literally hack because nobody can overwrite your identity which is already overwritten because it is decentralized cross border payments become a lot more efficient because it is transparent and it is irreversible smart contracts can be executed where the contract can be a part of pieces and as each piece gets executed the contract gets executed and because it's completely transparent and it's non immutable there is um, there is nobody you know there is there is no challenge there of okay this is wrong or something has been done it's safe cyber security which is is a big problem and is one of the upcoming i would say not upcoming but i would say one of the big potential opportunity areas in the future is going to benefit a lot from blockchain and actually um goldman sachs and has predicted that blockchain is going to change the finance industry of the future actually even right now a lot of the financial applications of the services of the of are using blockchain extensively now artificial intelligence is probably one of the oldest technology trends which we are going to talk about today but for at the same time it is also the one which according to me has still so much room to grow we are talking about just to give you an idea about the big debate between jack ma elon musk about sentient and non sentient ai that is how far i am looking and why am i saying that is because look around you everything you have right now uses artificial intelligence but are we really using that capacity to the most today or going forward nothing you build will be without ai and with 5g coming with better hardware with quantum computing coming in the capacity the capability of using artificial intelligence in medicine in robotics in big data in insights it's just the start it's literally we are scratching the surface of what we can do with artificial intelligence so that's why i'm i'm putting it as one of the top of uh, one of the five technologies which are going to change the world because going forward it's everywhere it's everything nothing is going to be built without ai so what have i learned while i have implemented a few of these technologies myself first and i think super important for everyone to understand is that when you look at a uh, new technology implementation don't look at it as a, you know as a technology implementation look at it as change management because any new technology which has not been implemented so far in your organization will face resistance so you have to look at it as change management which means that you have to follow the steps you have to prepare your leaders 
and your stakeholders about this technology. How do you do that? You do that by truly understanding the problem you're trying to solve and how this problem is solved by the tech. And I'm not talking about the, the technical, I'm talking about because your leaders, your non-tech leaders, your non-tech stakeholders are not going to understand the technical details, but rather the business problem, the process problem, and how this tech will solve that process problem. That should be crystal, crystal clear. You should have a clear vision of how the final solution will look. That final solution should align with what is the overall strategic goals and direction of the company and how your implementation is accelerating that process, is accelerating that vision. Now, once you have done that, and let's say you have gotten the approval, execution is going to be the key. Why? Is because you will get one shot at it to do it properly. My experience is that if you over promise and you under deliver, then any further change becomes that much more difficult. So you have to give yourself time for setbacks. You have to give yourself space for failures and you have to manage expectations. Just to give you an example, I was, remember I was doing a um, machine learning implementation in one of my previous projects and the leadership was expecting that uh, the, the solution is gonna be implemented and in two months time, uh, they will be saving millions of dollars. That doesn't happen. An ML solution, even after despite testing, takes time to get trained, takes months, like the solution which I implemented took about three to four months, six months, up to six months, till it started giving uh, trackable, started giving uh, predictable, actionable insights and results. Once it started and when it, once it, it, it became stabilized, no problem. But I had to manage that expectations and timelines with the leadership and stakeholders right up front so that I got the time to let that execution be completed, to let the solution settle down. While you have done that, now you have done the hard work, but the follow-up is crucially important, which means that you have to see whether people are using your solution. So you have to give uh, demos and you have to take feedback and you have to go and you have to encourage people. Like I probably for next six to seven to eight months was going to different teams, pitching the solution, telling them to use it, asking for feedback. That's how you gain the, what happens is that you have to gain a specific critical mass. Once you gain a specific critical mass of users, then the solution is, it's a self-perpetuating machine. It is going to grow by itself organically and people are going to start using it. But till you reach that mass, you will have trouble people actually adopting the project. And a very good way is to constantly review and analyze the results of your execution. You always track and you showcase the good results. You keep your leadership, you keep your stakeholders informed about how your project is doing. You show how it is contributing towards your organization goals and you will find that you are accepted and your, your solution is accepted and encouraged that much more often. So there are, you will face a lot of questions, but while starting any project, I found that these three questions are some of the most common ones and the first three questions which always come into your head. So what are them? First, I'm a project manager, I'm a non-tech. I, I don't know the details of coding. How can I implement a machine learning solution? That's the wrong thing to think about. Product management and execution of this product, you are not gonna be like the lone ranger in the wild, wild west doing everything alone, no. You will have a team. That's why you do and you build products and projects in a team. Know your strengths. Your strength is under, if your strength is understanding the business, then you understand and you frame the problem. And then you go and you partner with a, with a person who knows the technical solution. You as a PM, your most important task is to have clarity on the problem and have exceptional clarity on how the tech solution is going to solve that problem. 
the actual coding implementation of that tech no first time when i was doing ml i didn't didn't know anything about how to code ml now i have been trying to learn a little bit but right from the start i had a data scientist i can never achieve his level of insights into machine learning and statistical data mining etc because it's not my role but i was very clear that using this machine learning solution what i wanted to solve what was the problem what were the challenges what are the variables what are the constants i knew that and then when i talked with the data scientist he asked me 10 different questions all business related which i had not thought about but he knew it because he needed that information to create the solution that is your job as a pm to make sure the requirements are super crystal clear and met and features are met then okay i want to build this super fancy solution but uh, nobody none of my stakeholders how do i know if they even want it well go and talk to them you think that you have a problem that your company needs a problem which needs a solution that's an opportunity go and talk to all the stakeholders you believe are going to benefit from it try to find okay is this really a problem which requires a solution and once you have found that solution once you have sorry once you have found that problem then you you will start seeing that okay there are certain predictable patterns across uh, different stakeholders and different problems so once you have understand the common minimum thing which you have to deliver from there you start and if you are trying to build a product which is actually solving somebody's deep important problem i have i don't see any reason why a stakeholder is not going to join with you more than happy to do join with you they will provide you with valuable insights they will provide you with valuable problem statements with valuable requirements and that's how you start work you negotiate with them you talk with them you get them excited about the project and what is the impact it is going to bring to their lives now the impact brings me to the third question yeah well uh, how do i convince my leaders again when you are doing the impact you show them how this impact is going to align with the ops with the revenue figures doing this in the short term are going to cost you this much money but in the long term because of these efficiencies of scale because this gain in time bandwidth because this gain in people and personnel are going to save you xxx number of dollars you give them a very clear goal of this is where i will reach by end of this year and this is where i will reach by end of this year you tell them all the stakeholders which have been aligned you tell them how your solution is aligned with the overall direction of the company but more most, most important part in my experience is that when you go to a leader in your organization you don't go to them with a problem but you go to them with a fully fleshed out plan of what's the problem what's the solution what's the execution what's the impact when you do that process you will find more often than not that leaders are going to come out in support of you because they feel they will feel that they can trust you that they can see the importance of the solution and that's it best of luck thank you for listening to me and keep calm and keep innovating